respected mu'mineen, mu'minat, dear brothers and sisters, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sermon of Amir al Mu'mineen reminding us of the muttaqeen, the characteristics of those who have God consciousness, piety, righteousness, awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout their lives. The month of Ramadan, we wish to gain taqwa, la'allakum tattaqoon. One of the aims and priorities in my fast, Amir al Mu'mineen mentions those characteristics. He mentions, for example, they talk to the point, direct to the point, concise. The people who have Ahlul Taqwa, Malbasuhum al Iqtisan. That the dress sense of theirs is moderate, Tawadu, Iqtisad. Attire, their clothing is modest. Wamashyuhum al Tawadu. When they walk, they walk with humility. They walk with humbleness, not boasting, full of arrogance and pride. They walk the walk and talk the talk, both in remembrance of being Ahlul Taqwa, being someone who is gaining Taqwa, who is aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he states, the characteristic of a muttaqi, of someone who has taqwa, who wishes to have taqwa, that what do they do? Radu absarahum amma haramallah. A person who has taqwa is the one who lowers their gaze from that which is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Radu absarahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us these two eyes. Blessed us with these two eyes. Many of us may take it for granted, but can we think of an hour without these two eyes? My tasks, my activities, my drive, my walk, my preparation of everything in my life. From the moment I wake up to the moment I sleep, can I think of life? Or how difficult it would be for me without these two eyes. And how great of a blessing these two eyes are. As a reminder, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us these two eyes in the Quran on numerous occasions. Not just the blessing of this organ, the two eyes. But he mentions the importance of the eyesight, the vision, what you see, what you should see to keep your eyes open for. And what th- certain things one should lower their gaze. And eyes in various cultures, university, are not just that vision system, but you find, for example, in uh, philosophy, they talk about the eyes. In psychology, they talk about the eyes. In physics, they talk about the eyes, the science of the eyes. In biology, they talk about the eyes. Of course, Scientists say one of the most complex systems in our body are these two eyes. And it's been very difficult to transplant an eye to someone else because of the optic nerves and the many cells and many tissues that are involved in these two eyes. Extremely difficult. And these eyes also sometimes in common language when we speak to one another, we mentioned that, for example, the love that we have towards someone else or how dear they are towards us. We talk about these two eyes. When someone says, can you perform this talk for me? Uh, in Arabic, for example, they say, ala aini. Or in Farsi, even, rushisham, for example. That my two eyes, they are so beloved to me that I'm ready to sacrifice my two eyes for you. And that these two eyes are so precious for me that I'll do anything for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us and says, for example, in the Quran, Alam naj'al lahu But did we not give these two eyes for you to fulfill and use and perform the tasks of gaining taqwa? 
of gaining nearness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatest form of receiving communication, receiving data, are with these two eyes. We open our eyes and we see many things and we gain lessons. And what do we do? We transfer these lessons into our complex mind, understanding and awareness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even mentions about those people who enter hellfire was not just because of their eyes seeing that which was haram, but rather they close their eyes from that which they should have seen. They should have used their eyesight correctly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ كَانَتْ أَعْيُنِهِمْ فِي غِطَاءٍ عَنْ ذِكْرِي they were the ones who what? That they closed their eyes to those things that would increase the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence the imam states, Al-Basar, the eyesight, Babul i'tibar, is a gateway for reflection, for understanding, for learning. For gaining knowledge, this eyesight, the use of the vision, to have a foresight. Therefore, you find that we are recommended to see, to look, to reflect. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he reminds us of many things to see and reflect. And the more we see the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more it gives us an understanding of how even greater Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Of course, we can never with our two eyes physically see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the imams would even state to those that, for example, asked, Ya ibn Rasulullah, let me see God, for example. Let me see God. The imam said, look at the sun. Immediately when he wanted to see the sun, he got dazzled. He said, I can't see the sun. The Imam would say, if you can't see the created, how could you want to see the creator? The creator is even greater. And one way to gain our reflection, to increase our reflection and awareness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to see his creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, states that, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لأولي الباب That what you see in the skies, the earth, the mountains, the rivers, the lakes, the night and day, these are all signs for you to reflect. For those who have intellect, for those who have aql, to reflect and gain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two eyes, that the Imam states, ما أكثر العبر وأقل المعتبر That there are so many things to reflect upon, to gain lessons from. But those who are truly using their eyes in the correct manner to gain lessons are very few. To gain the true dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are many things that not only if we use our two eyes and utilize it correctly, that it's good for us, but we have been reminded that if you use these eyes correctly, you get thawab. And not only you get thawab and hasanat, if you use these eyes correctly and utilize it as ahlul dhikr, ahlul taqwa, it's a form of ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A form of ibadah. To use my eyes in the correct way and the correct manner. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, فَلْيَنظُرِ الْإِنسَانُ مِمَّ خُلِقَ خُلِقَ بِمَّاءٍ يَأْفِقُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, see, and see and reflect upon what you were created from. Every human being, you were one day a drop. You were nothing. You were one day a drop. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you the bones, the skin, the flesh, 
the organs, the eyes, the intellect, the tongue. Let each one see where were we? Where have I come from? Where am I now? And where am I heading? This is a moment of i'tibar, a moment of reflection. Think about it. Comprehend it. Appreciate it. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, what I should nazar, what should I see? فَلْيَنظُرُ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Mankind, before you eat, one is recommended to see what they eat. Look at what you eat. And this is not only physically what you're eating, whether I'm eating chips and fries or whether I'm eating kebab or burger or what's going to be for iftar and I should just see it and look at it. No, it's a moment of reflection, a moment of thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a moment of appreciating the bounties and ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon me. And of course, however much we say alhamdulillah, and the bounties and ni'mah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us will never be able to truly value it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you try to count the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَلَا تُحْصُوهَا When تُعَدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ That if you try to count the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَا تُحْصُوهَا You'll never be able to truly estimate and count and calculate the amount of blessings He has provided you with. Also, mu'mineen, when we look at our ta'am, look at the, not just the physical, the external aspects of the ta'am, but look at the spiritual consequences of the food that you eat, the drink that we drink. What consequences are there for me to eat such? Alhamdulillah, we see this when mu'mineen go to the local grocery store or the shopping market, the, we look at the ingredients. What percentage is there? What percentage is there of certain products? What I should avoid? What's going to be harmful to my children? I don't wish to feed them with such. Insan should look at what they eat and comprehend and appreciate and prevent themselves from eating that which is haram. Prevent themselves that which will be harmful towards them. Harmful towards their beloved ones. What else has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that we should see and look? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran says, فَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Go travel and walk on the, upon this earth. فَانْظُرُوا And go see كَيْفَ كَانَ عَاقِبَةُ الْمُكَدِّبِينَ Go travel in this earth, walk upon this earth, and see the end outcome of those who belied others, those who are liars. What was their aqibah? What was their end outcome? What did they achieve? Go see. Read in history. Open your eyes and look and see the aqibah of those who were husnul aqibah. They had the best of outcomes. Those who had su'ul aqibah. Those who had the worst of outcomes. Let me like less, take lessons for myself today. For my future, by reading and seeing the examples of others. Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ سِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَانْظُرُوا كَيْفَ بَدَأَ الْخَلْقُ Go read and see and look in this earth by traveling in this earth and see how this creation of the earth, how it existed, what lessons I can learn from the nature Looking at the nature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation in itself as a form of ibadah. That's what I should see. How I should use my two eyes. Two eyes, for example, to look at my parents. The hadith states, مَن نَظَرَ إِلَىٰ أَبَوَيْهِ حُبًّا لَهُمَا بِرَأْفَ وَرَحْمَ عِبَادَةِ One who looks at his parents, with kindness, with love, with mercy, that in itself is a form of ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just to see the beloved face of my parents with kindness and mercy. Or to look at the holy Kaaba. Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to perform 
the visitation of the Holy Kaaba. One of the great deeds is to perform tawaf. One of them is to recite Quran. One of them is to pray. But one of the great deeds in this holy place, the holy place of the Holy Kaaba, is just to look at the Kaaba. That in itself is a form of ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To look, to use these two eyes. To look at the pages of the Holy Quran in itself is a form of ibadah. النظره الى المصحف عباده يخفف العذاب عن الوالدين ولو كانا ظالمين ولو كانا ظالمين one who looks at the pages of the quran it has so many benefits heaps so many benefits reaps so many good deeds one of them is تخفيف العذاب of his parents that reduces the chastisements of the in the qabr of one's own parents even if they were ظالمين قراءة المصحف ليس شيء أشد على الشيطان من قراءة المصحف نظرا Nothing is more damning for the shaytan, for the satan than to recite from the holy pages of the Quran the shaytan would flee away from you Why? Because you opened the pages of the Quran and started to gain some barakah blessings by looking at the pages of the holy Quran Looking, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, for example, looking at many things that there are good deeds, that there are thawab, that they are recommended. Looking at your teacher, looking at the ulama, looking at your parents, open your two eyes, use them. And there are the one that is mentioned in the khutbah al muttaqin and the one that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Holy Quran that these two eyes should lower their gaze. The haram look, the lustful look between the male and the female and the female and the male, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, غُضُّوا أَبْصَارَكُمْ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Tell the mu'mineen and tell the female mu'minat, lower your gaze. Subhanallah. When it comes to lowering the gaze, Many lessons are there for us today because lowering the gaze back in the days was to actually see a female or see a male and there were difficulties in there. But nowadays we need to be careful in lowering our gaze using some of the devices that we have. Some of the devices which are with us, the TV, the computer, the laptop, the tablets, the phones, there are moments that are pictures, images that are haram for me to see and look and gaze. Lower your gaze. Haram look must be stopped. And this is a message for every single one of us. Be very careful that we need to ensure that we do not look at that haram look. They came to the Holy Prophet they started to complain to the Holy Prophet. Ya Rasulullah, we have a complaint. We have a shakwa ilayk. We have a complaint to you, Ya Rasulullah. What is that complaint? They said, Fulanun, doesn't mention his name, the narration. Fulanun, yanduru ila harami jarih. He goes to the top of the balcony. He goes to the home. And yanduru ila harami jarih. He looks the haram look, the haram gaze upon the female of the community, the neighborhood. وَإِنْ أَمْكَنَهُ مِنْ حَرَامْ لَمْ يَرَعْ مِنْ ذَلِكْ And if he were to perform more haram, he wouldn't stop himself. He'll perform more haram. They came to complain to Rasulullah. Rasulullah فَغَضِبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Rasulullah got very upset about this complaint. وَقَالْ اِئْتُونِي بِهِ Bring him to me. Let me advise him. Let me admonish him. Let me speak to him. Let me give him, give him proper lessons from the teachings of the Quran, from the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from what we should be practicing. Do you know what they said immediately to Rasulullah? They said, Ya Rasulullah, innahu min shi'atiko. Ya Rasulullah, he is one of your shi'a. He is one of your followers. The Holy Prophet said, إِنَّهُ كَذِبُ He is lying 
to claim to be a Shia, to claim and say he is one of our Shia, ولكن, however, his a'mal and his af'al, his actions and the way he treats others is not the actions of a true Shia. A true Shia is the one taba'ana bi'a'malina wa lisanina. He is the one who follows us by what? By his tongue, by his lisan. He says, I'm a Shia. And his a'mal, his actions show that he is a Shia. Actions speak louder than words. Actions speak louder than words. My actions should show today that I am a true Shia and follower of the Quran. A true Shia and follower of Muhammad and Ali Muhammad salawatullah wa salamu alayhi majma'een. And this advice is to me before anyone else. Everyone. We need to be careful about our gaze. The haram look, the lustful look, the inappropriate look. That's why there was a mu'addin in the community, in the masjid. And... It's mentioned in Anecdotes for Reflection, a very good book that I recommend our Mu'mini to recite. Then they came to his brother and said, now that your brother has left, we would like you to recite the Adhan. He said, no, no, no. He said, no. Why are you refusing this chance to recite the Adhan from the top of the Manara? He said, because I fear what my brother done. He said, what did your brother do? He said, my brother, whenever he would go to the top of the manara after the adhan and before the adhan, he would spend some more time there to look at the female of the community. This is not what I want to do. I do not be a, wish to be of those who perform the haram look, even if it's during the recitation of the adhan, even if it's through the masjid. I wish to ensure that I have taqwa Allah. God consciousness, reminder of the importance of piety, of taqwa, of muttaqeen. And lower your gaze from that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden. These two eyes are a blessing. These two eyes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided the opportunity for these two eyes for us to see vision, perception, depth, color, Various functions. And also you find these two eyes, they are lubricated. They secrete some tears. Voluntarily and most of the time involuntarily. These two tears, they allow, the tears allow these two eyes to be what? Lubricated. These tears, they also, what do they do? The glands that secrete tears, Why? They rid some irritants that get within the eyes, dirt, or certain external stuff, external products. These two eyes, they have tears that wash it away. What else? These tears of these two eyes, they are sometimes an emotional response. When you go to the airport, you find in the arrivals desk or the arrivals lounge or in the arrivals section, you find some people, they're full of tears of joy. When you go to certain matches or you watch some games, you find some people, they're full of happiness and they start to shed tears. Sometimes also people, they're in pain. They're in difficult moment. They start to shed tears, an emotional response. And also when they shed tears, they shed tears mostly out of gham or mostly out of huzn, out of sadness, out of grief. Many of us in the world would shed tears. And these two eyes, they secrete tears. Imam states that kullu aynin baqiyah. Every eye shall cry and shed tears on the day of judgment, Yawmul Qiyamah. Except for those who have these three qualities, they shall not cry on the day of judgment. They shall not shed tears. Remember, we said the day of judgment is Yawmul Nadama, Yawmul Hasra, the day of regret, the day of remorse. 
the day of difficulty, the day that people shall cry. There would be some people that will be smiling and joy, the mu'mineen, mu'minat, wujuhun dahika mustabshira. But there would be some people full of tears and crying. They will be crying and tears except for three who will not be crying. Ainun, eyes who in this world saharat khashyatillah. An eye or eyes that in this world stayed awake in the night. Sahra, why? Out of love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibad of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'aynun, that cry, that person will not be shedding tears. Wa'aynun, fadat min khashyatillah. And eyes that were overflowing with tears out of fear of sins when facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That ayn, that eye shall be not shedding tears on the day of judgment. And the third one would be what? وَعَيْنٌ غَضَّتْ عَمَّا حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ An eye, an eyes that lowered itself from that which was haram. In addition to these three, Imam Rada alayhi afdal salatu wa salam states, Ya ibn Shabib, O son of Shabib, in bakayta ala jaddi al Hussein, O son of Shabib, if you were to cry for Abba Abdullah al Hussein, in bakayt lil Hussein, ghafar Allah kulla dhambin adnabtu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall forgive all of your sins. Cry. Let your eyes shed tears for Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Sagiran, kathiran, qalilan, kabira. Whether your sins were small sins, whether they were major sins, minor sins, or big sins. Why? Because these eyes were, be, uh, were eyes that were what? Bakka. They were crying for who? For Sayyidi wa Mawlai, Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Shed tear for Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Let these eyes have the function of grieving for Imam al Hussein and shed tears for Hussein ibn Ali, the one who Rasulullah would grieve for his martyrdom. The one who Fatima al Zahra would grieve for Hussein ibn Ali. The one who Amir al Mu'mineen and Imam al Hassan al Mujtaba would shed tears and grieve. And every single one of them, they would have the honor of having a janazah, an honor of having a rite of their funeral. And each one of them would look to one another and they would say, La yom ka yom ka ya Aba Abdullah. La yom ka yom al Hussein. There is no day like the tragedy of Aba Abdullah. There is no grief like the grief that we will shed tears and remember Abba Abdullah al Hussein. That's why Imam Sahib al Asiw al Zaman in Ziyarat al Nahya he reminds us about shedding tears. Sabahan wa masaa la andubannaka. Sabahan wa masaa. I shall cry and shed tears and grieve for you, Abba Abdullah al Hussein. Not only on the day of Ashura, not only in the days of Muharram, like Sabahan wa masaa every morning and night I shall direct my heart and myself to Abba Abdullah al Hussein and call out and remember your grief and tragedy.